SpaceX finally makes it to space. So somebody came to my channel and said that my debunking has failed. So let's take a look at what Elon said, what he promised and how wrong I was. His goal was to get the first boots on the ground on Mars by 2022. Since then, Elon has pulled back to a more realistic 2024 deadline to reach the red planet. Did you catch that 2024 to reach the red planet? Let's hear it from Musk and his original promise. Fairly confident that we can complete the ship and be ready for a launch in about five years. Five years seems like a long time to me. Yeah, it seems like a long time to for me too. Yet here we are, six years later. But wait a second, take another look. He didn't say he was gonna take the rocket to space. He said he was gonna land two cargo ships on Mars in 2022. Talk about being optimistic. Even I forget what he promised sometimes. And then when I look back, then I get shocked how insane these deadlines are. So what else did Genius Boy say? I really ran out of books and started reading the encyclopedia. And he has a photographic memory so he could remember everything. He can remember everything besides what he promised. Uh, so then in 2024, uh, we want to try to fly four ships. Four ships in 2024? Four? Uh, two of which would be crewed. And two, which, two, two cargo and, and two, two crew. For the love of God, why Musk? Why? Why do they come up with these insane deadlines and insane ideas? Listen to this. I mean, Gwen, come on. This, this, this is awesome, but it's crazy, right? Like, this is never going to actually happen. Oh, no, it's definitely going to happen. This is definitely going to happen. What exactly would happen, Gwen? What it, we're going to do is we're going to fly BFR like an aircraft and do point-to-point -point travel on Earth. So you can take off from New York City or Vancouver and fly halfway across the globe. In a, you'll be on the BFR for roughly half an hour or 40 minutes. She wants regular people to be on a space rocket. You know, average regular people. This man suffers from a disease that affects 93 million people in the nation, obesity. So she wants to blast regular people into space. How does it feel to be blasted into space? I tell them that you will fear for your life. If you don't, you're incredibly naive. This is definitely going to happen. For the love of God, why do they keep promising this crazy stuff? And then I remember this. You have to understand, drugs can make you feel good. They make you feel on top of the world. You're happy, sure of yourself, in control. But it's artificial. It doesn't feel artificial until the drug wears off. Then you pay the price. So what else did Gwen say? If I can do this trip in ha half an hour to an hour, I can do dozens of these a day, right? And yet a long haul aircraft can only make one of those flights a day. So Gwen's idea is to do 10 flights a day. 10x. You know who also had that idea? This magnificent plane, the Concorde. Technically ambitious project of the century. It would cruise at twice the speed of sound, with enough range to fly across the Atlantic. Although it would burn more fuel, Concorde would make two flights in the same time a regular jet could make just one. I can do dozens of these a day. Right? And yet a long haul aircraft can only make one of those flights a day. Concorde would make two flights in the same time a regular jet could make just one. Can only make one of those flights a day. So even if my rocket was slightly more expensive and the fuel is a little bit more expensive, I can run 10x at least what they're running in a day and really make the revenue that I need to out of that system. So what was another issue with the Concorde? There was the boom a thunder-like noise from breaking the sound barrier that could be heard on the ground. I wonder if a giant rocket lifting off 30 minutes from your city makes a lot of noise. I can't hear any noise. Do you hear any noise? I can't hear anything. One of the benefits of flying this rocket close to the city, as Gwen said, is that you have to learn a new language. What language you say? sign language because you won't hear anything if it's, this is launched close to you. I do dozens of these a day. This is how it sounds when smaller down. rockets are landing. There they are. Uh, 
Double sonic booms. And these ones are not even Starship. So Starship is even louder. So what kind of a boom does Starship make when it lands? Well, this is how it sounds when it lifts off. How many times did Gwen said you have to listen to this per day? Dozens of these a day. <laughs> you serious? Who doesn't want to hear this 10 times a day? And this will launch and land from a big city like Hong Kong, Los Angeles, Bangkok to Dubai and Singapore. So what would happen to all the windows in the city when this thing launches? But we don't have to worry because after you hear it the first time, you won't hear anything else after that. I wonder how people felt about the Concorde. The noise caused many countries to ban the Concorde's overland routes altogether, meaning less money to be made. That's strange. All those countries banned it. Who doesn't want to listen to that wonderful sound? And she also said that the revenue went down. But what did Gwen say again? I can run 10x at least what they're running in a day and really make the revenue that I need to out of that system. But how are you gonna make revenue when it's banned? Many countries to ban the Concorde's overland routes altogether, meaning less money to be made. And really make the revenue that I need to out of that system. So what the other problems did they have? Dick said the Concorde was too expensive, too elitist, and much too noisy. It wasn't that the technology didn't work, it was that the economics didn't work. It was simply too expensive for enough people to afford to fly. That's because fuel was pricey. And almost 22 hours of maintenance was required for every hour in the air. Huh, fuel was pricey. I wonder if rocket fuel is expensive. So it's 100 million per launch according to SpaceX. And they're claiming it's gonna be 100 people per flight. I highly doubt that. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. A million dollars per person. That's cheap, right? Here is Elon doing some math. Greatest mathematician. Oh. They call me the walking calculator. Plus one. Two. Two plus two. Three. Four. Four plus one. Five. Uh, five. Five plus one. Six. Six Seven. plus one. Seven plus one. Eight. Eight plus one. Nine. Nine plus one. Ten. These guys are just counting in millions. They're math geniuses, just like Elon. His brother, Kimball Musk. When Elon was, was 10 years old, he got tested by IBM and he was found to have one of the highest aptitudes they'd ever seen for computer programming. It's about to get harder now. 100 plus 100. 200. 200 plus 200. 400. 400 plus 400. 800. 1,000 plus 1,000. 1,000. <laughs> I love these guys. <laughs> these guys are hilarious. Math geniuses just like Musk. I had a friend of mine that asked me what interest rates does to the economy and lowering them to 0%. It's like getting us incredibly high. See, enough of this shit will make you invincible. This is what the government did in 2008. They lower interest rates at zero and kept them there. So the longer you keep interest rates at zero, the bigger the bust later. Ludwig von Mises wrote in 1951, there is no means of avoiding the financial collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as the result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion or later as a final and total catastrophe of currency system involved. This is what the government did in 2008. They brought about a huge credit expansion. And now we have to choose to stop it or continue down this bad path. And who's on top of this credit expansion boom? Mr. Musk, who has benefited a lot by this 0% interest rate. A 0% rate makes it easier to sell expensive cars. Also, it blows up the stock market a lot. But this is what government does. It flips the economy upside down. So eventually when the recession hits, the recession is like a cleaning mechanism. It corrects all the mistakes we made the last 15 years. The recession we got in 2008 was because we kept rates at 1% for a few years. But this time we did it for 15 years. 15! So the next recession is gonna be the worst one in 80 years. And when is the recession coming? Well, that's a billion dollar question. I don't know but I suspect it's that interest rate go up a lot. Meanwhile, we can watch this shit show go on. Just using Elon Musk's name to teach people economics. Because when these things implode, I want people to know why it happened. Biggest credit bubble in human history. 
and he's oh at the top God. of it. Whatever. This is why we should end the central bank <laughs> and don't let them manipulate interest rates because this happens. An insane credit bubble created by the central bank. Just look at the small bubble in 2008 that collapsed. The next one is gonna be gigantic. Hopefully people find my channel when it all implodes. So drop a like and you can support this channel on YouTube, becoming a member and Patreon. Thanks for watching.